morning you guys it's time to throw on the rear coilovers let's get into it all right well got her backed in i think we got enough room to close the garage because it is absolutely freezing today as you can see i'm wearing my gloves i got the heater turned on though so if i close the garage we should be in good shape oh yeah yeah make sure it's got to clear Okay, what's going on you guys? Welcome back to Channel Anderson. Today, like I said, we're gonna be installing the rear half of the custom yellow speed coilovers that I got quite a while ago now, to be honest. Uh, if you haven't seen the video on doing the front, it is a full custom setup. The first time it was ever documented, pop up a little portion of the video, but it is a full camber plate kit that I customized with my own kind of hodgepodge together Frankenstein coilovers using E36 parts, Mercedes parts, etc. Uh, and then the rear halves are just regular W203 coilovers with a higher spring rate. So we'll get into that in a second. The reason that I waited so long to do this is because the rears are actually very new. <laughs> I put KYB gas adjust shocks in there not too long ago and it's felt great the way it is, but I'm actually selling the whole stock setup uh, to Pacific Northwest 210, so shout out to you. Uh, but he's stopping by later on today, so I wanna have him ripped out and ready to go for him. So, that he can make use of it on a car of his own. The C55 suspension is fantastic suspension uh, from the factory, so can't really go wrong. It's a great upgrade for uh, other benzes that it fits on. So, yeah, I got a bit of a time crunch right now, so let's go ahead and get into it. I'll probably time lapse you guys for a good chunk of this but I'll narrate over it if there's anything that I feel is important you guys need to know. So let's go. All right, first things first, you guys won't have to do this, but a small battery life. I just unhooked my battery because the trunk's gonna be open a long time and the light in the trunk will make the battery get weak uh, if I do it for too long. So I am going to pull these carpet pads off. Yours process is gonna be a little bit different because I have them cut to make them kind of easier to pull off. Um, I could probably even access it through the little slots that I've cut, but I'm gonna pull them both off. That will just be easy to get to everything uh, and we'll also jack the car up and just kind of make our way. All right, you guys, those are out. You can see how I've kind of cut the release on them, uh, mostly just to fit both of the rear uh, strap braces. But next step is loosening these up. You don't have to loosen them or take them off all the way, but we will eventually. And when we do so, we'll take off this bar, obviously, so we can reinstall it together. Uh, but yeah, just getting those loosened up. Next up. All right, guys, that is loose. Bar can come out now. I'll keep all the washers that I was using. The strut brace coming out. All right, guys, I'm gonna keep these uh, on just while I loosen everything else uh, at the bottom, just so there's no chance that they wanna fall out. But let's go ahead and move underneath. Just kind of scoping everything out. Um, I'm not exactly sure how the uh, yellow speed springs and all that stuff's gonna mount in here but we shall see and then to get these out last time when we put the kybs in we just put the jack underneath the uh, kind of back side of the control arm undid that bolt and then slowly drop the jack down uh, and then we can unbolt the bottom side of the shock and try to get that out as well but little by little i got to take off the little plastic covers too there should be a couple eight millimeter screws and then those little plastic covers come off so you can put the jack on the actual metal control arm the plastic covers are off they were 10 millimeters actually the weird thing is this little winglet where it connects to was bent down so i don't know if we accidentally did that last time we were doing this luckily luckily it's not part of the structure at all but uh i don't think that i'm going to run the plastic covers anymore anyways they're kind of unnecessary um i don't know why they run them from factory necessarily. I guess they're just a little protective cover, but this is metal. I don't see why you would need it, but anyways, ooh, that bolt looks ugly. Yuck, that's the gas tank bolt. Ew, I should probably spray, spray some stuff on that, but <laughs> I'm noticing as this car gets older, there's definitely some uh, corrosion stuff starting to pop up, just kind of inevitable being an older car but still in pretty good shape i try to spray it down here and there every once in a while to try to protect it as well as i can but eventually we'll pull this up frame out and we can really refresh a lot of this stuff 
All right, guys, sorry I was working ahead. Didn't time lapse you guys while I was doing this side. I will on the other, but got everything out. I had to use a little bit of potential oil. The bolt was kind of stuck on the control line, but luckily it came loose. Uh, and then this side is a E Torx, I think like a E14, no, E16, and a 15 millimeter nut that holds the uh, actual shock in. And then we have your rubber pads, obviously, that go up in the uh, spring crevice there and the spring. So now I can pull it all out. The thing I'm confused about is how these mount up exactly because they have this whole setup but how do you get that to sit flush in either one of those sides of the control arm seems a little bit weird but we'll see all right guys so we were adjusting these try to get them matched up um, obviously it's gonna be a little bit different because the dampening rates are different the spring rates are different so don't know if these will align all the way but um, at least getting them close for now and then we did figure out for the lower part of the coilover this bottom piece bolts off of or unbolts from the uh, adjustable collar ring thing there and this sits perfectly flush into a little gap here so that way you can bolt it solid to the control arm it's not like wiggling around inside um, so this bolt is not for any adjustability really it's just for locking it on to that lower collar so yeah I'll still run the factory rubber um, up top and we'll just kind of go from there I'm gonna go ahead since we're under here and I'm doing this kind of clean some things up all right guys just measuring out the shocks took a break for a while had a cool uh, conversation with Kenny and Ian shout out to you guys uh, I'll link their Instagrams or pop their Instagrams up right here uh, they're developing some pretty cool stuff for the Mercedes world so I won't share too much but yeah there's some cool stuff going on so shout out to them uh, we have our springs I basically matched uh, or matched up these two um, little collars from talking with a few people, shout out to Efren as well. Uh, he also runs these coilovers on his C55. He said he basically put them almost to full max because he runs like a 275 in the rear. Um, so I think we'll be fine. I left a little bit showing, like three threads showing on top. And then I also have the number four spring pads, which are bigger than the factory. I think the factory is two or three. So I think that combined should be um, a good height and keep it pretty close to stock like I want it. So uh, again, showed you guys those already, how they mount underneath. So I think we're pretty much ready to try to mount one side in. If we can get the shock in like this, we'll do that. Otherwise we can always shrink it down and then extend it back uh, to make it easier to get the control arm lined up. But yeah, let's go ahead and try to install it.
Okay guys, we have this side mocked up. Should be good. Um, the spring kind of like hangs loose until there's some compression on it. So we'll see what this translates to. I have no idea right now until we drop it on the ground to see actually what the height is gonna be. But we pretty much just put the shocks to where the rubber mount is making contact. And then on the other side, I will just measure um, the, basically from the top of the threads to here to make sure we're lining up correct, but it should be the same if we're matching it up the same way we did. Um, it is 140 right now and uh, we need to get the other side off for two o'clock so that Pacific Northwest 2 tank can come get these shocks. So let me take this side apart now. All right, guys. Andrew is here. Oh, I kept saying PNW210. That's fine. That's my Instagram. Because <laughs> I didn't know his first name, but yeah, Andrew. We know each other now. Yeah. He just came by, picked up the suspension for the C55. So. Yeah, man. So I really, really appreciate it. The wagon. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so we'll link him. His Instagram is super cool. He does nice, high quality yeah. video and all kinds of cool stuff. And he's got great cars. Got an E55 as well. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, you have a it. you have a plethora right now. Yeah, E55, E430 Sport, yeah. uh, the E320 wagon, uh, C320 wagon. Yeah. He's got an E320 wagon parked in my house. We have a CL55 as well. So we, we suffer yeah. from the same affliction right yeah. now. So. <laughs> Pretty much. Well, shout out again. Thank you. <laughs>to get those started once we drop the car down then that'll come up a little bit more All right guys hey hey hey! look what i have that came in handy i forgot we had these little t-handle four millimeters that is what size allens are i'm just tightening up a little bit so it starts to show the threads and then i'll go ahead and pop the wheels on and lower the car to uh finish tightening them All right guys i don't know where the time is going but i got sidetracked my wife pulled up in the ml63 it was making a strange noise which sounded a bit scary Power steering pump might be going out. Um, that's what it sounds like. Thankfully, the part is not that expensive, but <laughs> you guys want to see where this thing is located? Oh, yeah, it's somewhere down there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. This might be one of those jobs that I hand off to somebody else. We save enough money on all the other things we do so that uh, when jobs like that pop up, maybe we don't have to do it. I probably still will end up doing it, but I'll keep an eye on it. I do. So I'll update you guys about that. But anyways, let me throw the wheels on, get this thing back on the ground, and we can finally get it all cleared up. All right, guys, GoPro is back. Let's lower this thing down and uh, see where she's sitting. Fingers crossed. I don't want to adjust this. <laughs> All right, guys, super happy. It's exactly where I wanted it. We jumped on it a bit, try to compress them. They'll settle a tiny bit, but even after settling, they'll still be in a good spot. Just finished cranking down the threads on the strut brace. Go ahead and throw my carpet back in here. Torque up the wheels, we're good to go. Officially, fully back together. Like I said, I'm not gonna be running those anymore just don't see the point um can't move it out of the way but we'll drive home later i did do a little more relief cuts on these little carpet pieces just to make them easier to get in and out they were kind of a struggle in the back the way that i had them cut before but i think that is about it to be honest you guys um very happy to have all four corners now officially on yellow speed sorry to yellow speed it took so long but uh, like I said, the front was such a big job and us figuring that out, the camber plates. Um, now we get to, you know, do the easy, the easy side of the equation. So, we're good to go. 
you guys for watching. Hopefully it was helpful. You picked up a few things at least. Shout out to Andrew for stopping by. Shout out to Kenny and Ian earlier for our conversation. Very meaningful and uh, exciting to think about what they have going on. So yeah, just a, a fun time being in this Benz community and in the little niche of people that are doing kind of crazy modifications. I'm happy to be in it and I'm happy to see it expanding and growing. I really think that there's a lot of untapped potential within these cars and platforms and drivetrains. So that said, again, much love. Thank you guys. See you on the next one. Peace.